Oh yeah, three pre-rolls. Some new ad reads for the new year, including AG1. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why... For the last four years on this show, I've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. That's why we've partnered with them for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash JRVP. That's drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Check it out. Anthony, we don't have to choose. We don't have to choose between hair growth and our health. Don't try to choose. Take Nutrafol. The drug-free whole body approach promotes hair growth from within. No compromises, just better hair. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men. You enter the promo code JRVP. Find out why 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. I've done it. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. Enter the promo code JRVP. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code JRVP. And finally, it's Helix. They're offering up to 20% off mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners go to helixsleep.com slash jrvp this is their best offer yet it will not last long with helix better sleep starts now three beefy pre-rolls for the first show of the year uh we're also going to talk about our favorite uh christmas movie we saw together get naked in the pool at bass pro fishing and uh, our dream celebrity feud team all kind of coming up in episode 229 of the jesselnick and rosenthal vanity project jrvp Junior Vice President. New Year, same attitude. <laughs> you know, I messed up right out of the gate. I meant to come in today. And Aaron, I was going to tell you, I was going to have you go uh, when I did my thing. I'd go New Year, and you'd go, uh huh. And I'd go, same attitude. You'd go, whoa. And then play the music. Do you want to try it now? Yeah. All right. New year. Uh huh. Same attitude. Whoa. Yeah. Perfect. Just like that. But we didn't. We needed the music. No. I think you need to do it again. Nope. Nope. Three would be too much. Yeah. One was like leaving them wanting more. <laughs> Two was just enough to be perfect. Three would be too much. Two and denying me the pleasure of hearing it a third time is the same attitude. So That's right. Sense. That's right. You heard it in your head when you asked for it again. A lot to catch up on. We've been gone for three weeks now, unless you subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> and then you've heard us every day. Uh, great stuff on the Patreon. Um, the 24-hour episode, Aaron, <laughs> I think was incredible. The way we didn't sleep. Yeah, it's amazing we did that. Things got wacky. Things got crazy. So, yeah, if you are a Patreon subscriber, and yes, we did up the rate for the new year. It's worth it. You got to subscribe to find out why. Um, a lot of stuff happened. We had my birthday. We had Liz's birthday. We had Christmas. We had New Year's. Black Monday was yesterday, <laughs> one of your biggest days of the year. And now we're here. First episode, 2024. Yeah. The Jack Bauer year. I mean, I don't know if Black Monday, where the NFL coaches get fired, quite fits in with all you know, that. Was it a good, Black was it a, Monday and first day of free agency were two they, they were days. They are big, yeah. Um, I feel like now with my role, it's slightly different, but it's still rolling. We're cranking through. But was it, you know, was it stressful getting the Liz birthday out of the way and your birthday and Christmas in a row? Was it relaxing? Like, what, what, how was the? It wasn't relaxing, I'll say. And, like, it, it, it kind of ended with the 23rd. We, you took us to a Celtics game. That was really nice. That's right. But Liz's birthday, of course, is the day before mine. And my birthday present for Liz fell through. I had I was at a birthday and Christmas lined up, and it fell through like a couple days before, and I was like, fuck. How do I make her birthday good? So I took her shopping on her birthday, which was pure hell. It's shopping and uh, on a couple days before Christmas, and I eventually bought her a coat, which she loves. I did a good job. Took her to dinner. It was nice. Uh, so my birthday was like a relief. I was like, can we just sit in the couch and watch movies? She was like, yes, we can. So we did that and then went to dinner um, for my birthday. My brother bought me dinner on my birthday, which was very nice, very baller move. And, uh, and then Christmas, of course, uh, you and I went to go see... Um, 
I want to call it in the zone, auto zone. What, what, it's a zone of interest. Zone of interest, auto zone of interest, <laughs> if you will. That I mean, that's a missed opportunity to tie in auto zone and zone of interest. Maybe in Germany. I don't know. You know in zone of interest when they're constantly talking about trying to get the car fixed? <laughs> that's how you know you go to auto zone. Auto zone of interest. It was sort of about the everyday aspects to life while you know a, a genocide is happening right next door so i think a mechanic coming over and just kind of fixing fixing the car would totally have actually made sense within the context it, it, of zone of interest movie. great movie great christmas day movie <laughs> greg and i and the movie's not it's not empty by any means no, christmas day no. it's pretty full i would say half full yeah greg and i are the youngest people there not by far, maybe by, by at least five or ten years. And I might be the only Gentile. <laughs> is that, is that the, the non, non-Jewish word? Everyone there is so, so Jewish. And, uh, and I loved it. I loved the experience. Um, I had to kind of get up early Christmas Day. Met you at the theater. We like. I don't think we even talked. We like walked in, sat down, <laughs> watched Zone of Interest, and it was like, "See you later." I've uh, I've got to go. I was well. I was heading to work. Yes, but there. Yeah, there is something about um, seeing a Holocaust adjacent movie. It is a Holocaust movie on on yep. Christmas, which felt it felt very JRVP. And as I was watching it, I was thinking like, "Am I am I enjoying this? This is really well made." I didn't know you knew more about it going in. I would recommend people see it because since I saw it and even that day, like I thought about it a lot. It's one of those movies that what they were trying to accomplish, they did. And it sort of it was like it was very creeping up on you. Mm -hmm. I thought it was was really good. It was a movie about evil. Um, different forms evil can take. I thought the uh, the, the wife was incredible, uh, and a, a great movie. Uh, if you don't know, Aaron, did you see Zone of Interest? No. It's like a science fiction movie. <laughs> it takes place in a world where the Holocaust did happen. It's incredible. <laughs> oh shit! It's incredible. I you know what I saw last night? I've been I just watching a ton of movies. I last night Me I too. watched Anatomy of a Fall. Great, you would love it. Anatomy of a Fall was great. Um, kind of reminded me of Zone of Interest a little bit. And uh, Dream Scenario, Nicolas Cage, yeah, was good. I enjoyed that, but I haven't seen a ton that I that I really loved. I've liked everything. I was gonna save it for for Recommendation Station. Maybe not even this week, because you know we only have so many weeks. But I've seen a bunch. I'm gonna decide which ones are my favorite. I feel like they've all been good. All the uh, award nominees type book. Things have been good. Nothing's like really blown me away where I've been like, oh wow, that yes. was that I was incredible. I feel like that too. I've liked um, them all. Hopefully I'll get to see some more. I want to see Ferrari. It's a couple of the movies I want to see. I did see Godzilla and enjoyed it, but nothing again, nothing blew my hair back the way I wanted to. I'm waiting for things to come out on demand so I can check them out. But uh, I got to relax. Took a little while to relax to be able to. It takes like a week or two to kind of chill out and, and uh, unclench. Did it even happen? I feel like you haven't really... Uh it just, I think not having to get in a plane for a couple of weeks was really nice. And I think when I head back out tomorrow, I leave for Boise. Uh, Boise, outside Sacramento, and, uh, and Reno this weekend. But I, the one show nights, I think it'll be, as soon as I get on stage, I'll be like, oh, I feel great. And it was worth the time off. But I'm excited to get back out there. Now I'm like in the zone. Auto zone. <laughs> auto zone of interest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that I, uh, I'm just thinking about Milwaukee. I'm thinking about that special. Mm. Still deciding where I'm going uh, between the between the streamers. Um, do I release it myself? Do I release it myself and have my fans pay me money to be able to watch it? Do I bet on myself? Of course not. Of course I won't do that. It'll be on a streaming service. <laughs> Uh, but I haven't picked it yet, but I know it's going to be Milwaukee. So everything is like building towards that. I'm like an athlete visualizing. I'm not going out to play. You know, I'm going out and I'm visualizing the Super Bowl. So I'm, I'm excited for that, uh, for getting in shape, figuring out what I'm going to wear. It's all coming down to April 13th or whatever it is uh, in Milwaukee. Um, other things I wanted to talk about this week. Two great things happened. Uh, one, Aaron, I assume you are aware of the Cat Williams interview. Uh, I've heard some of some of the did you look at like about. bullet points of like because it's not people it's not he's not really going after our contemporaries but i watched people. a lot of it i watched a bunch of it i not not i when i saw it was two and a half hours i was like wow mm-hmm. i actually still would listen to it maybe as a podcast uh but i watched at least four or five extended like couple minute clips it i was watched great. a bunch of clips i read every article about it <laughs> and loved it so so much cat williams is a national treasure 
Uh, Catwoman is my favorite. I would have liked it the same if he had trashed me and during it. Like that's what, it was so funny <laughs> that that it just absolutely killed me. And if he's wrong about some things, I don't care. It's fine. He's so entertaining and hilarious that I, I loved it. And I thought Shannon Sharp did a great job um, handling him. Really? Mm -hmm. I just thought Shannon Sharp was like, what is happening right now? And just was letting him go and almost yeah. was uncomfortable because he had had Steve Harvey on his show, right? And I, I think oh, Cat sure. Williams was like guys. responding to him when like when <laughs> like he should have been laughing more actually was my takeaway when he he starts talking about that Cedric the entertainer looks like a little walrus or whatever <laughs> it's like come on Shannon you gotta be laughing at that like I'm dying oh when he says <laughs> earthquake can't read I mean it is <laughs> it was so so funny to watch Cat confidently go off like do I believe Cat Williams read 300 3,000 books a year between the ages of like four and 12 no I do not um, but I do love him so, so much and love that he would go in and just talk wild shit like that. It was a perfect, uh, perfect interview. And the fact that everyone felt like they had to answer for it. Yeah. It's like Kevin Hart is on like an NBA game or something and they're asking him about it. Like Ice Cube is like going up and like answering to, to these things. I thought that's how powerful Cat Williams is. Cat was great. In a week that Dave Chappelle puts out a new special. Everyone's talking about Cat Williams doing an interview. I thought it was uh, I thought it was amazing. Just I reading like the responses that the you know online about it was the best part because a lot of people I think were shocked to learn Steve Harvey's hair not real that fade back that in the day. That was surprising. That was people big. Were surprised. Yeah. I think one response which really stuck with me was like when Cedric the Entertainer responded like that was the worst possible response because he didn't try to be funny at all. No. He just sent out like as if he was like a politician trying to answer point by point, like, you know, in some debate. And it's like, you weren't funny at all. You lose. Yeah. I mean, wait until someone tells Earthquake what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be bad. Uh, yeah, I loved Cat Williams and then loved last night. Uh, I'm watching uh, I'm watching football, I believe. Was it last night or was it? When was the Golden Globes? Su Sunday night, two Sunday nights Sunday ago. Night. So, yeah, I'm watching, I'm watching the Buffalo game. Thank God Steelers wrapped it up with a Jaguars loss. I did not want it to come down to that Buffalo-Miami game. Steelers in the playoffs. Mike Tomlin's job is safe. A couple weeks ago, I said, a couple podcasts ago, I said I was bailing on the team emotionally. I could not handle the Steelers anymore after several losses at home to, to two win teams. I couldn't do it anymore. I was bailing. I was going to the Lions. I bought a Lions hat. <laughs> really? <laughs> I can't believe you bought something. And I'm, I've been into the Lions. Do I regret that decision? No. I had to protect myself emotionally from the Steelers team. I'm rooting for them. I'm happy. I'm rooting for them against the Bills. Someone, Nick Swartz, texted me said, who would you rather play, the Dolphins or the Bills? I said, they both seem bad. I don't care. Do I think we're a good team? No. But I'm looking forward to seeing Mason, the big dog, should have been the starter all season, Rudolph go out there and try to win one without t without Watt. I think it's going to be interesting. I'm excited for that game. Do I get to watch most of it from the Reno airport? Yes, I do. But that's fine. They've won their I'll Super Bowl. protected emotionally. Beating the Ravens backups and uh, Jake Browning and the Bengals and whoever else this was during the three-game winning streak. That that was their Super Bowl. I'm Them glad. somehow scraping in. Like, their fate is now being the worst team that makes the playoffs every year. Mike That's Tomlin saved his dignity. I, people, a lot of people thought he was going to leave. I thought he could leave, and now no one's saying that. So good on Mike Tomlin. I'm happy for that. But uh, during the game, I start getting texts from my friends about the Golden Globes, about Joe Coy at the Golden Globes. And I've seen some clips. I've seen some things. Aaron, did you watch Joe Coy at the Golden Globes? I did. I couldn't pay full attention because I had a child and a fire. I was starting in the fireplace. But uh, wow, what a man! How do you think he did? It didn't look like it was going well. No, it did. Uh, and again, th this is uh, Joe, Joe Coy's mistake was taking the job. It is an impossible gig, and these people do not care about you. They are very, very famous. It's loud in there. It's a bad audience, and he did the hack move, the inexperienced move of throwing the writers under the bus, saying, I didn't write most of these. That one, I, I took the gig 10 days ago. He should not have done that. The people at home never would have known he was struggling. Were the jokes good? No, they were not. Was the Taylor Swift joke even remotely controversial? No, it was not. Uh, but I, Joe Coy is having the worst week of his life. He should <laughs> never have taken the gig, ever. Yeah, but when I, when I heard about that, because I didn't 
watch it that oh he was in a lot of hot water for the taylor swift joke i then i found out what the joke was it was just the most benign joke possible she kind of she buried him with the reaction and i get why she's not she doesn't feel like laughing at it but she she buried him she buried him she and she i think it was because he was doing so badly in the room she was like um let me uh you know jump in on this which i get also she's sick of that joke it wasn't a good joke yes uh and it wasn't really about her but yeah joe coy sorry you shouldn't have taken the gig and if you did take the gig you should have done better sorry joe coy well, i support taylor swift i support taylor swift and travis kelsey i think um it's true love and um it's one of the greatest things that happened to the nfl i read We're back i read in the new york times uh op-ed that travis kelsey's gay wait what <laughs> new york times op-ed travis kelsey's gay Look it up. I don't understand the context of this joke. Look it up. Aaron knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I don't. I didn't read the I didn't read the op-ed in the New York Times, but I know there was an op-ed. Travis Kelsey's gay. What are you talking you about? You heard it here first. Anything else you want to get into from the last couple of weeks? Uh, How's it been without yeah. your family? You said on They're Christmas back. Day you were like, it's so nice not having them here. I did not I wish, say that. I wish I could stop time. It's easier. It's sad. It's it's not as fulfilling. It's not as full. But once you get past Christmas, especially, there's a little bit of sadness to the whole, like, Christmas is happening. I went to work that night anyways, Monday Night Football, Ravens, 49ers. It was fine. Well, because when we walked out of Zone of Interest, you jumped up and clicked your heels. <laughs> you were like, this is another perfect part of a perfect day. No. Um, but it's easier. Like, even if it's not as full and fun or, or whatever the word, it's just like, yeah, you have a bunch of free time that you wouldn't have had. But I've been working the whole time. And they got back last Friday. They've been fighting off jet lag. Walker's birthday's coming up this weekend. So uh, so we're back. We're back and rolling. Before they even got on the plane, but since we last did this, I, I took them to that Rams game. And, uh, you know, I was on the sideline before the game. And... Uh, got to bring the family there and Emika just points behind me and she's like it's Shohei it's Shohei Hatani right right behind you and I look back and he's three feet away from me and I, I took a picture like a stalker which I wish I, now I regret doing it's like you should treat this you know people like people and he was just like he's literally not game. he's not a dinner he's I know but game. he was but he was he was closer to me than you are right now he was like a foot and a half and I was like oh my god that's amazing uh tall tall handsome man you know, I see what the big deal is. Do you Emiko think, was very excited. Do you think if uh, if he was like, hey, Emika, yes. leave your husband and your kids right now. Of course. For five minutes with me in a porta potty. Yeah. That's what, uh, Aaron, would you do that? Yeah. Would you leave your wife and kids for five <laughs> minutes in a porta john with, with, uh, with him? Sure. Great. I think I I asked her that same question. I took out the porta potty and the kids. I don't think she would. I mean, she would leave the kids for five minutes. She wouldn't leave the kids permanently, but she would certainly leave me permanently. Um, but other than that, no. We we saw the Celtics game. Yeah. But yeah, you seemed like you weren't. You know. I was you very tired. Relax. The Celtics you game. I was. I, it was my my birthday had been over, and it was nice. But I just wanted like a day to have nothing to do, mm. which was basically the night the next day. Gotcha. The next day. So, yeah, I, I'm more relaxed, but I didn't get the true, like, lying out on a beach. And it looks like I'm not going to get to do that until this time next year. So, let's enjoy uh, Let's enjoy what we have. I got a, uh, a tattoo today, actually. You did? Yes. From our, our girl, Emily? Yes. What'd you get? Emily Effler. Well, I'll show you later. Okay. I, you know, it's covered right now. But uh, it'll show up on a, a future episode. So, that was exciting. That always gives uh, some pep in your step. I debated getting one on my birthday. I was going to go and get one, and I had like a kind of a walk-in appointment. There was a, I, did, mm. I called the place. You can come in at this time, and then just didn't. I'd gotten one. I've gotten one on this tour. I got one in New York, and Liz was like, it's too close to that one. Like, wait a little bit. So we'll see. I'm, I think I might get one in Milwaukee. I might try to find a good artist in Milwaukee and get something like the day before the special, uh, or I might just – I've got an idea I want. But I'm looking forward to hearing what yours was. How's Emily? She's good? She's great. Great. And now it's time for <laughs> – Aaron, how was your New Year's Christmas? Everything? Yeah, we care about you, Aaron. Uh, it was good. I uh, I went to a Kings game, saw Connor McDavid play. That's fun. Uh, brought my daughter, so I missed all of uh, the Oilers' goals. Yeah. How old are they? My daughter's three. Yeah, that's too young. I went to a Kings game <laughs> the other night. I went on the January second, and uh, and they lost. They got beat to three nothing. 
Like, feel free to disagree, uh, Aaron, but if at least how I, if I had more kids or if I was giving advice to parents, I think it's pointless to bring children to sporty events. You have to buy a ticket for until they're like seven. I disagree. Or it's, fun, six. it's fun to see people holding their babies in the audience. I get you want to be a part of a community <laughs> and you build memories. Uh, Aaron, if you were going to guess, if you were a listener of the show and you were going to say, hey, between Aaron and Greg, which one of them do you think called Anthony on his birthday? Who do you think people would guess it was? Uh, Greg. Yeah. And who was it, in fact? It was me. That's right. <laughs> Aaron good, called me on my birthday. Good job. So Al Madrigal could sing Happy Birthday to Me uh, with Bill Burr. It yeah. was Bill, Aaron, and uh, and Al singing me Happy Birthday. And it, it was, I wish that you had wow. done it on a voicemail. It was on a, um, it was on like a voice text. So I, after 10 seconds, it went away. Oh. But I, I, enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed hearing that. that was th thank you. Greg, no phone call. Nothing. I mean, you wouldn't have wanted a phone call. I definitely sent you a text. We went to the fucking Celtics game the next day. The only thing Greg wants to say to me is what time is zone of interest? <laughs> <laughs> and when are we seeing zone of interest? We literally again? went to uh, the Celtics the next day. But yeah, I'm sure I sent you a text. I did send you, you a text. I'm sure you I know I did. I'm fact. sure you did. I know I did. I'm sure you did, but there was no. Only Aaron had the, had the foresight to call me. And then I texted you from the Kings game because I accidentally mm -hmm. just bought tickets to a section of the stadium, which ended up being a suite. And I was with a, uh, a major uh, movie star. He's with Will Ferrell. He's like, uh, no, not Will Ferrell. Um, you were with Zach Galifianakis. Zach Galifianakis. And, and you're family. like, what, should, I, should I say something? I was like, he's cool. He's a cool guy. Uh, you know, you don't, don't say the fan thing. If you're like, hey, I loved your interview with Obama. He's going to roll his eyes. Yeah. But if you're like, hey, I want to kiss you on the lips, <laughs> then he's cool. And now uh, it's time for, did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Okay, look, I came in today to announce the five winners of the bracelet contest of the Suck My Dick America JRVP bracelet competition. And there were a bunch of packages when I came in uh, that have been sent in. I'm gonna take them home. They're not, you're not gonna be in the top five. I don't know if they're all bracelets, maybe there's something else, some other things. But I am gonna put them in for consideration into another pile, which I will talk about in the coming weeks. I'm, I'm bowled over and honored by how many bracelets were sent in by people. Looked at them over the break. Miss Kim helped me and uh, we picked five. We picked five, the, the top five, and I'll explain why they're in the top five. A lot of things were very similar, a lot of similar looking bracelets, a lot of very nice, but these were the top five, and I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, Kieran Gordhan, uh, K-I-R-A-N-G-O-R-D-H-A-N. He had suck my dick and then the word comma America. He was the only one who did that. A lot of people forgot the comma altogether. He had suck my dick, mm. comma America. That made me smile. You get, you get in the top five. Lindsay Getson. She had three. It was a blue. It was a suck my dick America, but in a stack. You know what I mean? It was like one bracelet that suck my. And then like, and I was mm. like, okay, that's cool. You don't want to do that. Lindsay gets and gets in the top five. Uh, CJ Forbes. It was like CJ. with a yellow outline around each one. So you reward it. looked like you were just wearing a regular bracelet. And then you looked closely. You could see. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. You, you took it. You colored outside the lines. Scott Schilling. It's a bangle. It's like a gold bangle with the, uh, the beads glued onto it which was a different take. No one else did that. You get in there. And then number one, look, you guys all had great bracelets. I'm not wearing them. Except for Kimberly Oxford. Kimberly Oxford sent in a multiple bracelets, high quality beads. I don't know anything about the bead process. Everything, her, they, they look the nicest. She sent one for Greg. This is what? Sweet before you mop. Sweet before you mop. She sent one to Liz and myself, different bracelets to say demon on them. And then she sent multiple of these Suck My Dick America, one of which I'm wearing right now, uh, if you can see it. More of like a, like a spells it out and like a, I don't know how you even describe it. But then there's several of the actual beads, one of which I'm definitely wearing. It matches the watch that I wear when I perform stand up. That I'm like, oh, this is perfect. So Kimberly Oxford, you are the true winner. But all the other people that I named uh, are also winners. You'll get the albums. I'm going to find the boxes, have Miss Kim send those out to you. She has your addresses. We'll have something for the other people who sent in, and I will go through the other packages that we got late 
they're disqualified because they're late, but I still love you because they say suck my dick America. In fact, Nana, the guy who wrote the Chain Gang All-Stars sent me a signed copy saying thank you for talking up the book. And I appreciate that you singled out this the line, suck my dick America. I thought of it as a funny line. So thank you all. I appreciate it. Kimberly Oxford, make jewelry for a living. Have that be your thing. And that was, did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? Now it's time to take it down to a place that always has a bracelet that says suck my dick America. It's email corner. Email corner. Emails. Email. Emails are a thing. 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 Emails. Emails. Email corner. corner. Emails. Emails. It's email, email corner. Guys, 2023 is an old man. 2024 is a little baby. The only thing it says the same is that emails are a thing. 2025, ask me again. Maybe the answer changes. Mm. 2024, emails are still a thing. And it will remain a thing as long as I am in the chair. This would be a weird podcast if you weren't in the chair. If I stood? No, just if it was me and someone else. If I was lying down on the table? (laughs) Uh, You can email us at jrvpjunior. Imagine if you had a podcast with someone else. If you had imagined if you had a podcast with just two fucking losers talking about whatever. Talking about I don't have a, I don't country. have a podcast like that, but yeah. I do have a very successful NFL podcast that pays the bills. The Around the NFL podcast. Mm-hmm. People should check it out. People should check us out on YouTube too, so you can see those bracelets. Uh, you can email us at JRVP Junior Vice President at Gmail dot com. All right, first one, Anthony. I was re-listening to Shakespeare. That's Anthony's uh, first comedy uh, special. Patiently waiting for your next masterpiece. I have a question about your audience interaction. What did you do to Kelly in the audience? I've always imagined you just bump her on the head with the mic. But it's very fun to imagine you just came up with that joke on the spot because she was annoying you and used the joke as an excuse to whack her on the side of the head. How often did you do that joke on the road? And how often do you want to hit Aaron for tripping over his own dick? First of all, Aaron tripping over his own dick is his own punishment. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you're already you're already laying there on the floor with your dick tied around your ankles. I, I feel bad. I'm not trying to punish you for that. You've already punished yourself. Appreciate it. It doesn't yeah. happen too often, if anything. I, that happens to me more. I but started it, this whole show just tripping all over the place reading those reading those ads. But when Aaron does trip over his own dick, it's loud. <laughs> yeah. You know, you like you're kind of stumbling around over your own dick. Aaron's like a crash. Um. What I did, I, what I bumped on the head with the microphone. I used to do a thing. I forget how this started, but I would be like talking to someone. And I always hated crowd work, but I would be like, I can, I can zing anybody. And I'd be like, well, you know, what's your name? And they would tell me the name, and I would just bop them on the head with the microphone. Now, mo- most microphones <laughs> are like the ones we have here. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're subscribed to the Patreon, you can see us. Right. If you're like a fucking caveman who doesn't understand how commerce works... If you haven't read The Fountainhead yet, and you're still rolling around in your own shit trying to find out what brushing your teeth means, then you don't know. But if you're watching, you can see there's like a little foam padding over the microphone. You know what I mean? So when you bop someone, it would sound loud, but it obviously didn't hurt at all, and it was always very funny. And I did that during the Shakespeare taping. The place went nuts. People would ask me for years what that was. And then a couple years later, I'm doing a show and there was a girl who showed up who would come to a bunch of shows and was like a, my, one of my first groupies. You know, like, I don't mean to put groupies down, but like she showed up for me, made it clear, I'm coming to see you again, I'm into this. And she's in the front row, it's a terrible show. And I go to do the thing, I'm like talking to her and I go and I hit her on the head with the microphone. And I really hurt her. It was one of those metal microphones. Oh. It didn't have the, fo- and I had never done it with a metal one before. I assumed it would just sound really loud and not be, but it like didn't sound loud at all and like hurt her. Why would you assume that it wouldn't hurt? Because I'd done it before with like, and I, I just never, I didn't do it hard because it was metal, just like it hit, it, it, and I felt it. Before she made a sound, I knew I just hurt her. And then I never did it again. Never saw her again either. She stopped coming to shows. And I didn't do it in like a hard way. It was just a quick like little wrist tap. Did you talk to her after boom. the show? Oh yeah. Okay. Extremely apologetic, like so sorry. That's never <laughs> happened before. Uh, it was bad, but I never did the mic bump on the head again. 
reminded me of that. I mean, I saw sh- you perform Shakespeare live, uh, and then a lot of those jokes before. I did not remember what what that was. It's been a while. It's, it's been did ten, ten the, plus did years. Did you go to the Shakespeare taping? I believe I did. Yeah. There were two nights. There was one on on Cinco de Mayo that was terrible, and then one. I don't know if you went to the one because Cinco de Mayo was so bad. I wouldn't have even wanted to talk to you about it. And then the next day, I remember going the to city. dinner afterwards. It was in yeah. New York. UCB Theater. I feel like I feel like it did. If not, I saw you perform that material in New York of course. before that. Uh, but I, I hadn't remembered Kelly. Wanted to find out. That was Jackie Bishop, by the way. So thank you, Jackie. She's a huge fan. Or he's a huge fan. Who knows? Aaliyah wants to know if there's a book you wish you could read again for the first time. I feel like this is the highest compliment someone could give a book. Looking forward to your reply. You read that question like you've just seen it for the first time and have never thought about what your answer might be. No, but yeah, you pretty much nailed me there. I have one answer. The only thing that popped into my head that I remember <laughs> reading this at the time, I was 18 years old. I just graduated high school and I had a job. The UPS was on strike. And one of my friends, their dad ran a security company and UPS wanted extra security because of all the picketers. So they had me at 18 just sit for like 12 hours in my car behind a UPS facility. I forget how much I was getting made. But I remember just sitting there reading, um, and I finished it, uh, Joseph Heller, Catch-22. Okay. Being, this is so funny. It's so unexpected. It's so absurdist, like about World War II, that I was like, I'm going to uh, – reading this for the first time is amazing. And I could oh, I always wish I could go back and experience the surprise of it. Like, I can go and read it again, obviously. Very funny book. But to read it again for the first time – would be incredible. That's my only answer, really. Hmm. That's one where I've tried to read it a few times and it, I didn't, it didn't hit me. Mm. Maybe I would more now. It's probably been a long time since I tried to read it, but it didn't, it, I didn't, I didn't get it or it didn't connect with me, but I, uh, everyone loves it and smart people love it. So I'm, I'm missing something that happens. How far didn't did you get? I don't even remember. Not far. I yeah. think I was just like, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I should try again. Uh, Two popped in my head. The Movie Goer by Walker Percy, uh, which was a really important book in my life. Just, And I've reread it a lot. But I do wonder, like these books that are so formative, it's almost like people say your favorite bands are, in your life are your favorite bands from when you were 15. That mm-hmm. hit me in a way that I sort of can't describe. And it almost doesn't make sense. It's about being, you know, it's in New Orleans, but it's also very religious and kind of just like wandering and what, what does life mean and i'm not a religious guy but that hit me so hard when i first read it that i'd be curious to see to what my reaction would be now like you read it as an adult for the first time what how would it hit you now because it doesn't hit me the same way now but i still like love it Mm because it's sort of a memory what's the other one and now walker's name that the other one was known world by edward jones which just like takes you on such a journey and it's not a book i want to go back and really read because it's so intense and so involved and a great book a historical novel. I think it came out in like 2003. But the first time I read that through, it like was more transforming than any book I've ever read. I've never read either one of those. Uh, Aaron, if you could go back and read any book for the first time, what would it be? Slaughterhouse Five. Mm-hmm. It's a great book. That's a great one. I did reread that actually like 10 years ago, and it was still great, and it was totally different than anything like how I remembered it reading. And it blew my, I'm with you, it blew my mind as a high schooler. And it now, it, when I read it as an adult, it also blew my mind, but in a, in a different way, it was still great. I remembered it, uh, I picked it for a report in high school. And so I like really studied that book. So I feel like I know what kind of inside it out. And I just remembered it from Footloose. Hmm. And he's like, they banned uh, Slaughterhouse-Five, it's a classic. And everyone's like upset with him. And I was like, why is it a classic? It's a cool title. It's a cool title. Good job, Aaron. Our last question. Uh, is addressed to Miss Kim. It's from David. I'm watching Celebrity Family Feud, and I'm wondering if Greg's two podcasts had a team. Would Greg choose the Around the NFL podcast team or the JRVP team? And Anthony, apart from Aaron, who would be on your team? And uh, he's looking forward to seeing you in Sydney. He's an Australian listener. Okay, hopefully I get there this year. I'm planning on it. Um, so I, I assume... Uh, you get five people on your team? Yeah. Okay. So it's Oh you do? So, five, yeah. so it's oh, wow. me, it's me, Aaron. I'm assuming I get Greg. Okay. Then I'm gonna fill it out with 
Rummy and Debbie. <laughs> Our teams are too similar. Uh, yeah, but if, I, but if I don't get Greg, if Greg goes to the other team, I'm taking Debbie, Rummy, and Liz. So me, Aaron, Debbie, Rummy, Liz versus Greg, the other two, and then who were you, who's the other two on that one? Well, who who would I choose there? Well, I would add Colleen Wolf, maybe Patrick Claiborne. I would just make it that they're kind of regulars on our. You other You think show. Colleen Wolf's going to show up for that? Yeah, I, you know what? I'm I'm changing my answer now. It's going to be me, Aaron, <laughs> Debbie, Rummy, Colleen Wolf. <laughs> uh, I thought just for the sake of this, though, I did imagine what would be the good JRVP team. I think you know the JRVP team would be fun because that's you know it's a it's not a comedy show, but I would like to have Anthony on my team if we're going to be on Family Feud. I think you'd be you know you'd you'd I'm make everyone be, laugh. Everyone wouldn't be on my team. <laughs> you think I'm gonna I'm gonna tolerate Steve Harvey giving me guff? No way. Uh, I'll lose my goddamn. But I, I've got Debbie as well. I've got Aaron, uh, and my last member, other than you, uh, would be Billy. I think uh, I think it'd be it'd be fun to get the boss in the mix. Yeah, I thought about Billy, but you know, do, does Billy go over Rummy? Of course not. Of course not. Uh, is Billy more cuddly than Rummy? Yes, a little bit, a little bit too much. As far as Aaron's concerned, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know if he replaces Rummy. He's not going to replace Aaron. Billy's not doing the day to day. Billy drops in when the check comes in, dips his beak, and then bounces. <laughs> uh, he's not replacing Liz. Cameraman Stu is another option, uh, but he always has a camera on his shoulder, mm -hmm. and they've got cameramen there already at the <laughs> family feud. <laughs> he never talks. <laughs> he can't. He can actually give an answer. <laughs> That's not bad. And that was Email Corner. Keep being a thing all year long. And that was, and, and, and that was, and that was, and, 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 and that was Email Corner. Diamonds around the world tonight. Diamonds around the world tonight. And now, unless you're listening to the Patreon because you're fucking poor <laughs> and you spend your money on food, <laughs> it's time for Ad Copy. Taking care of your health isn't easy. It should be simple, though, Anthony. That's why for the last four years on this show, I've been drinking AG1 every AG1 day. AG1 every day. No exceptions. Just one scoop, mix in water. Once a day, every day, makes me feel energized, focused. AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. Here's what happens. You drink it every day. You, when you don't drink it, you feel like, I should have drank it. Something's wrong with me today. What's wrong? I didn't drink my AG1. What else is right about AG1? When you sponsor our show this often for this many years, and then you come out with some new hot copy, which is what they got today, you're getting read first. Yeah, so that's you, a promise. If you look, sponsor a show for four years, you come out with some new copy, you're going to go first. That sounds like a, my, my call to improvise. Listen, here's why I like it. You ever take vitamins in the morning? You're always like, hey, did I take my vitamin today? You forget. AG1, you know it. A little bit of a process. It's a very simple process, but you know you did it. AG1. It's like an amuse-bouche for your day mm. in the morning. That's Open up your stomach a little bit. Get some vitamins in there. Get your day going. Get your gut health looking real good. It simplifies things. I'm getting older. I don't want to get older. Uh, I drink AG1. If there's one product that I have to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. That's why we've partnered with them for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1. You get that free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash JRVP. That's drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Check it out. Nutrafol in the mix. Got it. Got it in the mail. Have started to use it. Got to thicken it up, fellas. Got to thicken it up. Do I do I need it badly? You look at my hair like maybe a little receding, maybe a little thinning like in the Getting bald spider, just a little bit. A little thinning up But there. that's the point is you want to get ahead of this so that people aren't even spotting it before it happens. 80% of men experience hair thinning uh, in their lifetime. And it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a little bit to start going. So I've started it. Uh, Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over a million people seeking thicker, stronger, faster growing hair 
with less shedding. Uh, many supplements rely on ingredient studies. Nutrafol clinically tests formulations to ensure their efficiency. 84% of men, 84% showed improvement after six months. So it's a process. You take a hell, wear, hell uh, hair well, wellness quiz. Sorry about that. Chip into my dick. Uh, you go to Nutrafol.com slash men uh, for a personalized hair health plan. And uh, then you just get into the routine of it. And uh, if you're a guy, you don't want that thinning hair. You're not going to feel as good. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription. Free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men. You enter the promo code JRVP. Over 4,500 healthcare pros and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for ha- healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. Enter the promo code JRVP. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code JRVP. We got another one. Thank God. It's Helix. You've been with Helix a long time, another long time. We've been in bed with Helix as longer than you've been in bed with Liz. I sleep on Helix almost every night, except when I'm on the road. And when I'm on the road, I wish I was sleeping on a Helix. I buy Helixes from my friends' is. <laughs> uh, you can get the soft, medium, or firm. We, get, we got the midnight lux. Yep. Uh, I sleep on my side. Everyone's different. So you take the quiz. Uh, you feel what's best for you. They have a 100-night trial, a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. And it's very easy uh, to return and get a new one if you want or get the refund, whatever you want. It's a personalized mattress. It ships straight to your door, uh, and it's one that's going to work best for your body. They have 20 different unique mattresses. They got the award-winning Lux. That's what we went with. Uh, they got the Elite Collection, which is for big and uh, tall sleepers. They even have a mattress for kids. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash JRVP. If you don't take our word for it, it's winning number one mattress by GQ and Wired Magazine. Go to helixsleep.com slash JRVP. 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners, it's their best offer yet. It won't last long with Helix. Better sleep starts now. And that was Ad Copy. Let's get to headlines. Let's get to headlines. Let's get to headlines. Let's get to headlines. Headlines. I feel like Anthony's warming up, you know, he's unthawing after the long winter hi- hibernation. I don't know. It's still winter, bro. I know. Like whenever I let Nori out, that's my tortoise, you know, my only friend during the holiday season. So I was letting her out more than usual. I don't, you know, she's, she sleeps in like a cage in a little house, but letting her out in the backyard. And she's just, because it's winter, she's just digging. She's trying to escape. She's trying to dig underneath the ground to hibernate because that's just what her senses are telling her to do and then i have to like dig her out from from digging under the ground they're cold-blooded so they can't heat themselves i think nori just knows what's coming nori nori just knows knows where seaweed went before him and nori's like let me let me cut out the middleman dig my own grave i i (laughs) i know that aaron but i do it when it's like sunny out and just so they you know and she sort of like seems like she wants to get out of there every once in a while she'll be coming over uh but they got the heat lamp otherwise we, we we're taking care of her i know Take care of her. Poor seaweed. We've got to put seaweed back behind me. Maybe. Yep. Wurzel. An Alabama 2024 man. 2024 is the year of the Wurzel. <laughs> She's coming back. She's back. Uh, an Alabama man crashed his car last week outside and proceeded to get completely naked before cannonballing into the aquarium inside of an Alabama bass pro shop. He stayed in there about five minutes and uh, looked like he was having a great time. I can't believe this is the first time it's happened in Alabama Bass Pro Shop. I don't know where Alabama Bass Pro Shops get the money. Have you ever driven by a Bass Pro Shop? They're yeah. huge and they look expensive. They, they always are crowded. They look crowded too. I've never been inside one. I don't know if everyone's got an aquarium lot. like this. The, the, the aquarium's huge. What I like about the story is the guy jumps in thinking people are going to go nuts. They're going to be like, woo, woo t- tide roll. Yeah. He thinks that's what's going to happen. Roll Tide. And that's not what happens at all. Everyone's kind of like, oh, Jesus. And then he's just sitting there like, eh? 
And then, then like, but the pictures people are going to remember of him with this n- almost non-existent junk pressed up against the glass, where you like cannot see it. Yeah, that's very funny. Must we, be very cool. Again, uh, for the Patreon subscribers, yeah. or for the YouTube, if you want to watch it. If you're on the Patreon, you can see it right now. We've zoomed in <laughs> to his junk. It, it we're, it's so. It, it's so close to his junk right now. You can look at it if you're on the Patreon. If you're not, if you, ha- or if you're so poor that you take the money that you have and you pay your various bills and you take care of people in your life and you make sure that they're fed and they're clothed and that they're educated and that you take a little something extra to make life worth living. If that's what you're doing with your money, like a piece of shit. Then you don't know what his penis looks like, <laughs> right? It's all but the Patreon it's all blurry. people who are rolling up hundred dollar bills, making them into cigars, lighting them on fire, then using that cigar to light a regular cigarette and throwing that cigar away. Those are the people who got to see the guy's penis. It, that it's picture, in four K. It's in four K. And, and the one of him it. laying flat on the floor yeah. after he's just jumped out of the aquarium. Do we have that one, Aaron. Yeah, I think he was. Did he jump out of it and fall on the floor? Yeah, that yeah. one. He looks like he, he fell over the edge and he went down again. You got to be on the Patreon to see it, but it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth all the money that we're charging for it. Um, that picture is great. But uh, no one else seems like they cared there. Why are the people, th- there's rocking chairs there. Why are people not sitting in those rocking chairs? I would love to sit there. They're outside the splash zone where it must have gotten wet. Why does this ex- exist? I guess, okay, there's bass in there there's or something. Bass. They must, I mean, this place, it's like the Walmart of the South. Uh, peop, it's just cranking out money. Bass Pro Shops are like Indian ca- reservation casinos before the bass. That's why they have aquariums in each one because they're run by the bass, <laughs> by their own bass <laughs> laws. You cannot get arrested <laughs> by a regular cop at a Bass Pro, sh- pro, pro Shop. What's happening to that guy now? So, yeah. They said he was actually briefly unconscious after he fell over yeah. the side of the yeah, aquarium. He knocked himself out. He knocked himself oh, out. Sure. Um, but then he did wake up. He continued to shout something to officers. I, I hadn't read the whole story, which is that he had crashed his car in the parking lot first. Yeah, I didn't know that. Then went inside, took off all of his clothes, You know, was believed to be on drugs. Uh, he was shouting at officers and uh, was knocked out. And... Uh, the police chief in Leeds wanted to remind everyone this was, you know, they kind of didn't like that it became a fun viral story. They're like, no, drugs are dangerous, and he was dangerous. The police officers came to put handcuffs on him while he was lying down, but he woke up then and started yelling at him, and he actually kicked one of the officers in the balls. I mean, that's going to happen. I wonder, did he drive to the Bass Pro Shop to jump in the aquarium and crash his car? Or was he driving somewhere else, crashed his car, and thought, fuck it, let's roll? I think number two. I don't think this was a big plan. Um, he cannonballed into the aquarium, too, which is, which mm-hmm. is classic. Uh, I think he just he was on one and went for it. I think you jump into that water, and you got an expectation for what it's going to sound like when you get out of the water. And he jumped in and got out and realized that there were no laughs, no applause. <laughs> That what he did was bad. He should have just stayed. He was in there for about five minutes. At that point, just stay. I would have stayed. I would have drowned myself. See what happens. I would have drowned myself for the bass. <laughs> a chef in a Michelin-starred hotel restaurant in France has been forced to leave his job after being accused of tying up cooks putting apples in their mouth and carrots up their butt as part of a hazing ritual at the restaurant he ran. So he was, when you say Top Chef, was he on the show Top Chef? No, that's what I thought. That was the headline and it did get me to click, Okay, uh, but I still liked it. So he was just a big time chef. Yes, they have a Michelin star. They're a big deal, yeah. And the restaurant he ran, his employees, he he would stick carrots up their butts and apples in their mouths and make them do what? It was an initiation ritual as if it was like a fraternity. They had a name for it, Bizutage, uh, which is banned in France. I don't know if like that means that just covers all hazing or literally everyone sticking carrots up their butts as a hazing ritual to, to work in France. That I don't know. Uh, but yeah, he was doing that with, apparently with all new employees and it was 
someone shared it on social media and he completely denies all of it. Like he's saying none of this is true. You're taking that one to the grave. You're going <laughs> to deny that forever. I would hate to be the last guy to get Steve Bijoud. Wait, what? what do they call it? Bizutage. Bizutage. I'd rather be. Imagine being the guy who got Bizutage last, and then you're like, "Oh, hey, no, we're not doing that anymore." <laughs> you were the, after after it happened to you. We decided that it was weird, so the new guy doesn't have to do it. I would be Bizutaging everyone. You know, Aaron. You know how if you get molested, then you're gonna molest. That's what I've heard. I mean, yeah. that's not 100%. That's how bijoutage is. Bijoutage is like that, where if you get bijoutaged, you're going to bijoutage moving forward. It sounds fun. Which part? Like, the part of putting the carrot an, or the ap- apple? an apple into someone's mouth. and Not doing it yourself, but doing it to someone seems fun. Aaron, back me up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It seems fun. As far as pranks go. I wish I had asked him to, sh- but I'm just going to show you the, the the his photo. Like he's a good. He looks exactly like a 31 year old, uh, well off chef in France. Yes. You would expect him to look, but he just loves he loves getting those carrots up there. How big's the carrot? Well, I That's what I want to know. It's one of those long ass carrots. It's not like the baby carrots that are. It's not the ones I'm giving Nori. That's for sure. As to, as far as hazing goes, doesn't sound that bad. What are you talking apple, about? Apple in the mouth. Carrot in the butt. It's not that bad. I'd rather if ATO had been instead of a, a months of hazing. That was if they just been, yes. if they had just been carrot in the butt, apple in the mouth, five minutes, and then you're done. Steve Bijou. <laughs> 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 I yeah regret it. It's still strange to me that we willingly went through that hazing. They did. They did say off the bat. I remember like. There's no, how they said it was like, they're not going to put anything in you. They're like they would not do that. No gay stuff. They said, basically they, they, like that was, that, that was the, their rules. Um, this would have been a, a step too far, sp- you know, and you, but you're an adult in life. This is even worse. Like you're too, you're too old to be doing stuff like this. I remember when you're they always us, too old to be doing stuff like this. I remember when the fraternity told us there was going to be no stuff, gay, gay stuff during the hazing process. <laughs> and I flipped out. I said, what, what do you fucking mean? I thought this was America. I thought this was the university system and the Greek system. I'm not going to stand for it. Because they, the, the other, there was another fraternity, remember, on campus that was known to, to have some sort of insertion ritual or something. Like, like there was thumbs always up the, the butt joke, or whatever. No, it was either the, th- the thumbs up the butt, one thumb in the butt, one thumb in your mouth. And if, if, if anyone like slipped out, they had to switch. And there was the marshmallow in the butt that you had to eat. That were both wives' tales. Never they happened. weren't true. No. How do you but, know? But remember when, you t- when it t- showers in the dark? What are you talking about? Wh- For other fraternities. All- they, ours never did any of that stuff. <laughs> Our fraternity had showers in the dark. Where all the fraternity brothers would get in there and you would shower in the dark until you figured out who everybody was. <laughs> I, th- I didn't think it was weird. You did it, you did it a couple times a week at chapter meetings. It was fine. It was, it was no big deal. <laughs> a moosh boosh. Bizutage. Bizutage. <laughs> What was the song? Um, Bijutaj makes me think of G- Gigi Ta. Do you uh, remember Gigi Ta? No. I want to thank you. Remember that shitty song? It was like you. It was like you were singing to someone who was driving next to you. Gigi Ta. Nobody knows what you're you, talking about. And people know what I'm talking about. It was like I want to thank you for letting me in. I don't remember what it was, like, but it was Gigi Ta. Sounded kind of like Gigi Ta. Like the Dido song. I want to thank you or whatever. No, it was just like a guy singing, but it was a hit. It was a fucking hit. You know what else is a hit? What's up? Being a cop. Cops are people too, you know? No, I thought you said being a goth. I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and like most people, cops, they love throwing slushies at random people. They just love it. Uh, unfortunately, two Kentucky cops love doing it so much, they would tape themselves doing it, and then they would send the videos to fellow cops 
to laugh at, and wouldn't you know, it ended up getting out. So they would buy a slushie, yep. take a couple sips, f- start filming, and then chuck it. Was it like from distance, or was it just like someone's right in front of them, I'm going to nail them, they can't do anything because I'm a cop? I think they were like five feet away. As far as someone would normally be, you're driving by, they're on the sidewalk, you're driving by, and they throw it. I did watch a couple of the videos because they were out. And where was this? This was in Kentucky. Of and were they throwing it at white people or black people? Or it mixed? was white cops throwing it at poor people, which were mostly people of color. Yeah. yeah. It, the, you, you know what? I'll tell you this. If they had been throwing it at rich people, <laughs> I don't care what color. If, they, if, they, if, they, if someone was walking to work in a suit with a briefcase and got drilled <laughs> by a slushy, by a cop who was filming it, I'd be all in. <laughs> but throwing it at poor people, I got to say you're punching down. Yeah. That doesn't belong at the Golden Globes. It is so disgusting watching this these videos. You you almost can't believe it that because it's not I it's just so cruel. There there there's one where they're shown asking a woman like, "Hey baby, you got change for a dollar." And then when the woman turned towards them, they yell, "How about a drink?" and they throw the cup at the cup at him. And it's just she, like it's like some 14-year-old boy shit, but they're like grown ass cops th- doing it for no reason. She was going to give you change for the dollar. <laughs> you didn't have to throw the drink at her. Yeah. <laughs> These guys, this is why people hate cops. These guys are pieces of garbage. Are there good cops out there, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. Are these two of them? No. 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 No, you got to see a, a picture of them uh here. They were sentenced to 3 months in prison. Uh, or one uh, got three months in prison. The other one got two and a half years. I don't know what the difference between the two was. I guess they must have determined one he was He must in have charge. thrown so much harder. <laughs> he must have like really, like really been nailing people. Well, there was one, and I didn't see this video, but WDRB in Kentucky said there was one where he threw it so hard he knocked someone down, which is the dream if you're a the, the dream. Thrower. They just do, let these guys out of jail. Don't put them in jail. Give me two black cops in Kentucky. Give them an armful of slushies and let them rail on some white people in a rich neighborhood for an afternoon, and I call it even. If they knock one of them off their feet, it's worth it. They they proved that they had done it to 24 people. They did it to 24 people on video that was covered, which that's a lot. That's a lot to me. When I saw 24, I thought, but think how many they were doing. If they, If 24 was on video, there was probably like, I don't know, a couple hundred that weren't on video. They did it once, and they're like, that's funny. I wish I got it on video. They did it again. I'm like, oh, we did it. They got away with it and then thought, oh, we can do this for now. And then once they got to a certain amount, they were like, we're going to get caught eventually. Let's just keep going. <laughs> but 24 is a lot. I, di- I think you're doing that with total impunity. You do not think you're ever going to get caught. So uh, you are not our JRVP listener of the week. I know that's not up to me, but I'm th- these guys do not deserve it. Now you are in court. You're showing the uh, you're showing the jury evidence of these guys throwing it. Do you put sound effects in the video? <laughs> How about like not sound effects, but like on the old Batman where pow. you would just see pow and get zoinks. I gotta think a boing, 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 boing like after the person hits the ground would be fantastic. I think they were also in uniform. Oh yeah, they yeah. were in the cop car. Yeah. They were in the cop car, and the the videos that they showed. This was from Inside Edition. They were driving fairly fast as they did it because they didn't want to get caught, I guess. But that it's not going to help your accuracy. They're but bad cops. I guess they practice. And a slushies lot. are expensive. And then I they would like turn the, the camera on themselves and be like laughing and stuff. They they're not smart. They're they didn't want smart. that job. A lot of cops don't want that job. It's okay. This is, this is not the worst way to lose your job as a cop. Go ahead and throw your slushies. Don't go killing people for no reason. That's that's the JRVP 2024 listener promise. <laughs> Last headline. Finally in the news, a US pastor is accused of trying to put a coworker of his wife's head in the deep fryer at a McDonald's. First of all, if you're a pastor, and you're not so successful that your wife still has to have a job, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> you're a loser pastor. Where did his wife work? 
McDonald's in North Carolina. Okay. A pastor High with a point. wife who works at McDonald's. Because I was like, where did the deep fryer come in? So the, the wife is getting guff at work. She's a manager. She's training to be a manager. Her fellow employees were disrespecting her. She lets him know that they were disrespecting her like on text while she was working. Uh, and then he just came in there guns blazing metaphorically and so he goes and grabs does he just take the guy's head and try to get it in the deep fryer or is he like are they fighting and he almost head almost gets in there so he, if that's your go-to move if you're going to open with head in the deep fryer <laughs> that's a pastor that could get me to believe in jesus <laughs> uh that would be awesome if that was like that was his thing deep fryer guy he did punch uh one of these workers several times uh then put his hands around the, it was just one employee i think really like he punched the shit out of him it doesn't say actually whether it's a woman or a man punched the shit out of him i assume uh then put his hands around his neck led him to the deep thryer and said i'm putting you under and at that point like everyone else was like what the fuck and just started started fighting him too and like getting him off to have the presence of mind to say i'm putting you under <laughs> Is so boss, is so heavenly boss that I'm that I'm, I'm totally into it. I love the pastor. My only my only problem is if you're a manager at a McDonald's, you cannot expect your employees to respect you. <laughs> you cannot expect them to listen to anything that you say or not be mean to you. Yeah, you cannot have your husband coming in. To, what did he say? Now it's, it's time to put you. It's time to put you under. He, Listen, this pastor, Pastor Deep Fry, is the JRVP <laughs> listener of the week. I'll tell you right now. Now, the JRVP listener of the week. Now, the JRVP listener of the week. The JRVP listener of the week. I mean, that I'm putting you under is awesome. You respect my wife at this McDonald's. I, I think the pastor is going to keep his job, if not get a better job because of this. Right. The his woman's gone. Will love she it. is not working there anymore uh, at the McDonald's. That seemed untenable. But yeah, I got to think people were listening real close the next sermon he made. Mm -hmm. They're not going under. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want any part of that. <laughs> Kissing that deep fryer. <laughs> and now it's time for... Choo -choo. Recommendation Station. Greg. All right, I'm going to start with a book I just finished today uh, that I really thought was amazing. It's called Some People Need Killing by Patricia Evangelista. Uh, what a great title. Some People Need Killing, uh, a memoir of murder in my country is, is the subtitle. It is by a journalist in the Philippines about the government-sanctioned murders of drug dealers and drug users and basically anyone, which is what the book was about over the last uh, six years, like 2016 through 2022, uh, during the President Rodrigo Duterte uh, run as president. And I didn't know anything about this. Like I had no idea that a guy was elected president in the Philippines, and so that's my ignorance, basically saying on the platform that I am gonna become president and then I'm gonna kill all the uh, people that are using drugs in the entire country. I'm going to take them out one by one. The cops are going to do this. And, and he won the election, and that's basically what happened. And as you can imagine, like it was total mayhem where it almost was like contagious, it was like a, a crazed, a crazed uh, country where the police were just killing everyone with impunity. And this woman, Patricia Evangelista, uh, it's just an amazing piece of journalism it's just like this is this is the real shit and she had been working as a journalist trying to document all the people dying some estimates around 20,000 people Titling killed uh, some people need killing by Patricia Evangelista it was one of the the New York Times five best nonfiction books I was like that sounds good I uh, checked it out and uh, it's just an amazing piece of journalism uh, and, and well written too. Just based on title alone, I gotta, I gotta do it. Uh, my recommendation this week, guys, the first book of the year I've read about somebody eating a baby, <laughs> eating a live baby. You know, I'm recommending it. I'm recommending The Glutton, The Glutton by A.K. Blakemore. It takes place uh, hundreds of years ago about a guy can't stop eating. 
keeps eating things. He's got an appetite. Works his way up to baby. I'm not really spoiling anything, but I am. Read it if you want. It's about income inequality. But a baby does get eaten. The Glutton by A.K. Blakemore. I loved it. I enjoyed the book, the whole book. Aaron, you got anything to recommend? A movie, TV show, anything? You know, I rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood last night, and I cannot get enough of that movie. It's so good. It's a great one. Yeah. It's a great one. Yeah, I, yeah, my most rewatchable Tarantino movie, Jackie Brown. I can mm. just put great. it on whenever. Yeah. Always be happy. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us in 2024. <laughs> we promise you the rest of the year is going to keep being just like this. Now, Walker, welcome back to America. Get us out of here. Whoa, Nelly, for Todd, too. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> <laughs>